number one Iron Age booty daddy. Tim Pool came to a larger degree of prominence years ago when he sat down on the Joe Rogan podcast with Vijaya Gade and Jack Dorsey from Twitter at the time. Now, that discussion was hugely important, and the large talking point there was the big tech censorship of especially conservative voices. Now, that's where I was introduced to Tim Pool, and I thought that he did an expert job in that particular episode so much so I have gone back in the past years and watched it over and over again and in addition to that I subscribe to his subsequent channels I like watching his daily updates because I think that a lot of times he will cover maybe not every story but he will cover stories that nobody else is and in fact some of those stories especially before the lockdowns really benefited myself and my family Tim Pool has done a fantastic job over the years covering how the mainstream media uses specific language and certain tactics against the audience in order to trick them into not fully understanding a story or why something needs to be covered. And that's the topic of this video today. Now, this video is not something that I think a lot of my uh, subscribers and audience necessarily wants to listen to, but I'm not going to dive into all the Eliza Blue drama that's been going on, although it does kind of have to be a part of this particular video. What am I talking about? Earlier in the week, Tim Pool did a live stream. He had John Rich from Big and Rich. I loved them growing up. And they ended up getting into the Eliza Blue thing. And I saw Tim do something that he taught me to look for. And it was using the media tactics in, in deflection and using the emotional response to deflect away from the actual story here. Now, when all of the Eliza Blue stuff really kicked off, it was when YouTubers started getting kicked off of Twitter and censored on Twitter, and everybody was like, oh my goodness, people are getting censored on Twitter. The new Twitter, same as the old Twitter. New boss, same as the old boss, right? And a lot of people in the, in the off were going, oh my gosh, Tim's got to do a video on the Twitter censorship because that's where a lot of people met Tim. He was talking about Twitter censorship, right? People getting booted, not violating terms of service, not going against it. And he came out and he was very passionate about making sure that people had the right to speak. And when people said, hey, Tim, Tim over here, censorship, the censorship, look at the censorship going on, Tim. What's good? No, no, Tim over here, Tim. Hey, hey, no. Hey, how, how come you're not covering this? Tim, Tim, there's censorship. And for about a week, he stayed dark on the topic completely. And when he did react to it, he didn't react to the censorship. He reacted to and then proceeded to demean people for bringing up drama, which at that time, the story had evolved to that point that seemed to be a very strange response and something that i was like well that that's interesting i mean you know yeah he did have this person on his show a couple of times but nothing really big there but that seemed to be not the response that a lot of people were thinking of especially for people like me who are wondering how is tim going to cover the new style of censorship versus the old style of censorship because he has been he did an expert battle with the people who were doing the censorship on twitter years ago now understandably it's under new management so it would be interesting to see how he goes after the censorship topic now, as this, again, the Eliza Blue story kept evolving and more and more was coming out, and that's the Eliza Blue thing. That's a totally separate thing here. But as it started, you started seeing the narrative and the tweets and the changing of things, and then Tim Pool's chat going, dude, what the F? And then, because the story had grown past the initial point of censorship, which it should never have done, it did grow past that point. It should never have grown past that point. And there are still people who have been censored online. So many people out there say, oh, this is Jack Murphy 2.0. No, because Jack Murphy never went out and got people banned off of platforms for talking about it. 
Jack Murphy didn't have that kind of clout, okay? He was just a guy who talked about doing the alpha male thing, lied about it, and got a bunch of money from a bunch of overly trusting conservatives, right? This is different. This is censorship. The thing that people tune into Tim Pool and on his show, people were like, you need to disavow that one guy who commented, who, who sent in money, which by the way, I don't know what, understand why people send in hate money for super chats. I, that's weird, but okay. Disavow Eliza Blue. And Tim's like, no, I'm not going to disavow anybody. I don't disagree with that response. I do disagree with the fact that Tim never, it was Ian on his show who was like, and look, if anybody gets, you know, censored or whatever, you know, against, they need to take that up with Twitter. And I'm like, and, and Tim completely skated. And he went, that's the op, bro. So it's weird to see how Tim is using the exact topics, the emotional responses, the twisting of words, the way that he has taught his audience to look for for years. It's one of the reasons I really respected what the guy had to say. I don't necessarily care about like the Eliza Blue thing. I, I mean, I care about it to a point that it's like, it's really entertaining. And it's like what I eat my popcorn to. Like I've been tracking it for like last like three weeks. It's fun. But I didn't really, I've done one video on it, but it's not my thing. I don't like doing videos on it. But this, why is the censorship guy not covering the censorship? And that was when it started to change. Because if the censorship guy is not covering censorship, you have to wonder, are there, are, is there a different motivation here? Is Tim no longer concerned about covering censorship on Twitter? Has he moved to bigger fish? Why is the guy who stood there and staunchly criticized big tech for years about the censorship of people, booting people off Twitter, even smaller things? He's done many, many, many stories covering many people, the banning of libs of TikTok, the, you know, um, uh, uh, going over the, uh, the Babylon Bee. Um, you know, the Babylon Bee getting yeeted, all of these people getting yeeted and he covers the censorship and how duplicitous it is. But all of a sudden, some YouTubers, prominent voices out there, people that he knows, people he's had on his show, start getting taken off. And he never once talked about the censorship of Twitter. And that right there is the story. And then once the story grew beyond it to the drama portion that it has become now, he started using that to retroactively change what the initial point was. Tim, why aren't you covering the censorship? It's an op, bro. You could have you being as intelligent as you are, knowing how the media twists and manipulate words because you've taught your audience to look for it. You say, you'll stop reading an article and go, see what they did right there? Read this. Do you see how that read? This is what they do. That sounds innocuous to most and you just kind of go, yeah, yeah. He goes, but this is what they do. That changes the context here of the facts that they're presenting. And it's counterintuitive to make you think something different. He did that on his show and has done that through his tweets. And I am not going to ascribe motive as to why he did it. I'm just pointing out that he did it. At least that's what it looks like to me. Somebody who's followed him. I've never given him money. I've got four kids to feed. I don't, I don't give money to YouTubers. I just don't have it. I got four kids to feed, guys. But... Why betray your audience using the tactics that you taught your audience to find? As soon as I, I've, I've sat on this for a few days, going, what is happening here? I'm not going, I, there's a lot of information behind the scenes. It does get into the interpersonal drama. That's not what this video is about. This is how I'm reading the situation. Why did the censorship guy 
the beanie man, the guy who not a lot of people knew about at the time. A lot of people did. He had quite a large channel. Why did that guy who stood up against the largest lawyer in YouTube and the CEO or a largest lawyer in Twitter and the CEO of Twitter, again, Vijaya Gade and Jack Dorsey, how did that guy who stood there and expertly and masterfully took down their arguments about censorship, why did he not cover the censorship of Twitter this time? That's weird. And that doesn't sit well. And why did he twist it in the mainstream media way that he knows about? Right? That he taught his audience to see. That's the only reason I caught it. I was like, wait a minute, that's that's weird. That's weird. And I watched his interactions and I'm like, he's he's dancing here. There's I, I know what he's doing because he he taught me how to look for it. Had Tim Pool not taught me how to look for it, I or maybe I'm reading this the wrong way. But I wanted to get this out there because you know what? I just I don't know. Because even I've defended Tim to a lot of personal friends of mine who watched him for years and they, I just don't like the guy. I don't like him. I'm like, no, but he's doing important work. He's doing this. He's doing this. I, I just don't like him. I don't know. Maybe my buddies are seeing something or saw something that I didn't see. But how does a guy who made his name covering censorship not cover the censorship and then blame the audience for wanting drama. That's my two cents on the situation, guys. Thank you so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know how you guys are reading the situation. Let me know if this is something that you guys are wondering about as well. Let me know if I'm wrong. And never forget, I dedicate a special live stream to everybody here on Sundays. It's called Sunday Coffee. It's at 11 a.m. every Sunday, unless I'm sick. <laughs> 11 a.m. every Sunday. I go through, I do a live stream, get the live chat in, I show the comments on the screen, and I read every comment that comes in on my videos. As much as I can, anyway. I'm starting to get a lot more than I used to. But I read every comment that I can, because if you guys are here dedicating time to me, I'm going to dedicate my time right back. And so if you guys like what I'm doing here, like and subscribe to the channel. It'd be absolutely fantastic. And I do hope that... I do hope that you guys enjoy what I'm doing here. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. Never forget, if you would like to be a part of my supporter live streams, head over to my Gilded or my Locals. Links down in the description, and you guys can join me for those live streams every single Wednesday. But right now, I would love to say thank you to everybody who is supporting me. Over on Locals, we've got Little Andean, Sword Rush, Frequency Studios, Katie Francis, Kikomon, Iron Age Media. We also have... Over on the Gilded, JP, the Miriosphere Origins, Skunk's Workshop, and the Gold Tier. He is an Iron Age booty daddy. Trippy Soul, also another Iron Age booty daddy. Kiko Mon and Frequency Studios to round all of it up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on the channel. And I will see you all in the supporter live streams.